Blog Talk Radio. You are now tuned into the best, best fatherhood radio show in the world. Furthering Fathering Radio Show. It's the Furthering Fathering Radio Show. The, the, the brothers are back in the building. Brother J in NYC and Brother L in the ATL. The, the, the Furthering Fathering Radio Show starts in five. Four, three, two, one. You ready? Let's get the conversation started. I emphasize that if anyone is listening to this as a replay or listening to it live, connect with further and fathering. You will be encouraged. You will be edified. The 20, 30 minutes that we're on the radio chopping it up is nothing compared to the energy and the strength you will receive from men who love you just because you're a man. And then as they get to know you, they speak life to you, they challenge you, they affirm you, and they enable you to be powerful where you're needed, which is with your family. Brother Derek, you're saying hello. It's not only uh, only, um, good for the child, but I think it's a mandate from God. Um, I think the heart of the Father belongs to men, and God has called us to be that for as many children as we can. So I don't echo everything you said. I'm, I'm, I'm fully on board with that. And I think um, the call is for more men to embrace that truth so that we can begin to rebuild our community, our nation, one family at a time. Today is October the 8th, 2019. I am your co-host here in New York, uh, Minister Jeremy Maynard. My best friend and co-founder of Further and Fathering is busy for the next month. Um, And Tuesdays may not be available for him for the foreseeable future. But uh, we're going to make this thing go and it's going to roll... you know the train leaves on uh, leaves on schedule, and uh, we're gonna make it roll, and we're gonna rock with it until we can't roll anymore. Anyway, <laughs> I am excited to be alive, and um, you know, it, it, despite uh, the ups and downs, the trials. Um, yesterday commemorates the second year. Of my mother's passing um, uh, And notice I didn't say I lost my mother Because when you lose something You don't know where it is I know where she is And whose arm she's in And how she's enjoying herself Beyond measure Anyway To speak to who Whom she's speaking to We always honor The Father The Heavenly Father Elohim and uh, I'm going to read a, a couple of verses and then save one for later. There's three of them that I'm eventually going to read. But um, since we're talking about uh, faith uh, and family being a faith-based institution, uh, let's go to uh, Hebrews chapter 11, the first three verses, and it reads, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And since we're talking about fatherhood at the forefront of this, Joshua um, 24, verses 14 and 15. And and those who know that that Christ's name, um, it was not necessarily Jesus, it's a later adaptation. His name was Yehoshua. And Joshua and Yehoshua are very, very, almost identical. So it's Yehoshua. And Joshua 24, 
14 and 15 reads, Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. Sounds like spirit and truth. Serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil to you to serve the Lord, choose you this day in whom you serve, whether the gods which your fathers served, which were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Heavenly Father, you are the Lord worthy and the only Lord worthy of serving. You are Elohim, the creator God, and you've given your spirit, your Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, so that we may worship you in spirit and in truth. And if a father is to worship the Heavenly Father and connect with the Heavenly Father, he must operate in spirit and truth. And it is, you said it is impossible to please you without faith. And faith is a reason trust in you, Lord. Faith is, is, is not just merely trusting you, but, it, but it, it impacts us, Lord. It's a loving, faithful trust in you. And it results in our integrity. It results in our faithfulness. It results in our hopefulness. And it, it results in our holiness, our set-apart um, uh, behavior, and in our love. We thank you, Lord, for you are the Aleph, Bet Aleph, our Abba, and because of you, you can further our fathering. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Wow, let, let me see if I have any callers on the line. No, it's just me. So it's we're in a time where there are code words that exist in places of influence where, uh, whether it be news or in popular media or in, uh, ed in education or entertainment, words like toxic, toxic masculinity, uh, where we are said that our Nature as prescribed by God is that there's something poisonous about a man being a man. That there's something wrong with manhood. We, we know in a natural sense that in a fallen world where sin is normalized and uh, the things that are good are called evil, and the things that are evil are called good, that um, unregenerate man is fallen, and unregenerate man can be and is toxic. It says the heart of man ponders evil continually. In, in, in Jeremiah it says the, the heart of man is desperately wicked. So at the core of who we are, um, there is a toxicity. But Christ made it very clear that we should be born again. And Paul states that we should conform not to the ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God? Now, as a father, it's you know it's easy to pass things on. Um, there's so many things that have been normalized that we are called to do that we pass on because of the institutionalization of tenets of fatherhood um, that we so easily pass the buck. The first one 
is faith. It, I take it very, very personal in my family that I we set a t- us aside a time on Sunday where we go into the Word and they hear the Word of God from me as me working as a conduit so that my masculinity is not toxic, so that my masculinity is a direct reflection and connection with Elohim, Creator God, Abba, Father God. And so that it's clear the teachings always reflect the importance of our connection with the Ruach HaKodesh, other known, otherwise known as the Holy Spirit. You see, we there are taught uh, subliminally on the, on the deep in our subconscious through entertainment and. The word entertainment is a is a really interesting word because we think that we are watching. In essence, we are opening up and allowing things in. When you entertain guests in your home, you are opening your home for someone else to come in your private place, your sacred place, your safe space, and your guard can be down. There's an expectation of sweetness for home, sweet home. There's an expectation of peace. So in the place where your guard is down and you believe that you're at peace, you open up and allow things in. And there's a hydra. A hydra is a multi-headed snake. Uh, It started in the garden singularly, but now it rears its head. And and that hydra is designed to empower misinterpretation so that you do not lean and hold fast to the knowledge of God, no, and and the the enemy doesn't really, you know, there's Satanists that worship him, but really, he would rather you worship yourself because he knows he's not God, and he would rather you worship yourself and damn yourself so that he can operate as his name is stated, Diablo, the accuser. Satan, the accuser, so that he can accuse you of the blasphemy of idolatry. Um, And right now we're in a time, especially in a world where where we have social media and everybody's opinion gets to put their opinion out there and everybody wants to elevate their opinion to the level of truth. And opinion has never changed its meaning. It's still an opinion and a perspective. Truth belongs to God. We have a perspective. Our perspective is limited. Thereby, our perspective is not truth. It can be an angle where truth can be observed, but it is a limited angle, and our perspective is limited. All truth is God's. So, where 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 the the individual is promoted the the um self aggrandizement is promoted um, and that is not the safe place the safe place we're designed by relationship for relationships so I teach my children that one of the most important things because they're they're so gifted. I am blessed with some gifted children, but sometimes that's a danger zone 
when you are very bright or very athletic or, or good looking or what have you, things are afforded to you that are not afforded to everyone else. Therefore, the temptation is more rich, more thick, more chocolate. And it's hard to say no unless there's something in you, something that has been repeated to you over and over again. The word is inculcation or inculcated, something that has been repeated over and over to you by someone who loves you, uh, someone who actually uh, cares about your future, that that the boasting is preparation for later disaster. If if not, uh, you allow others to boast for you, and even then, that could set you up. Ask, ask David when when the women said that Saul kills his thousands and David kills his ten thousand. He wasn't even bragging; it was someone else bragging for him. But it fueled the fire. I can give you a, a, an example from yesterday. Uh, um, Baker Mayfield, the quarterback of the Cleveland Browns, uh, has a propensity of showing off and being arrogant. And, and, and it's something that I, I, because my children themselves are gifted, I try to steer them away from it because the, the the end results can be devastating. His weren't as devastating, but he did, he's feeling it right now because the, the pounding he took yesterday uh, was because when he was the quarterback in college at Oklahoma, uh, he played against Ohio State, and Ohio State is well noted as a as a great college institution where football is concerned, they have the great band where they write Ohio in script and the tuba player dots the I or someone else dots the I. It's a popular thing. And they even try to um, uh, patent the word the, so you can say the Ohio State University. I mean, there's a little arrogance there too. But um, Baker Mayfield, his team beat Ohio State, and he took the Ohio, the Oklahoma flag from his college and planted it. Uh, in the in the midfield uh, in the fifty yard line, and and uh, it caused them to remember those who played back in college to remember. So uh, one of the Bosa brothers, who both played at at Ohio State, one of them plays for the San Francisco Forty ers and he hit Baker Mayfield over and over again. And his celebration was a mock of planting the flag. He remembered the insult that was said. So what does that have to do with faith? Faith is always remembering the goodness of God and not putting anything else in in his place. You know, um Sometimes we feel so good about ourselves, we, we, we put our pleasures in place, our desires in place of God. Uh, uh, sometimes we feel so down, we put our sadness and our anger in front of God. Sometimes we, we take natural things like uh, our race, our, our culture, our, our favorite things and put them in front of God. It's important that uh, we have accountable relationships so that when we step out of bounds as fathers, that our our coattail can be tugged. Because one of the beautiful things about fatherhood and being a flawed father who needs God is that our children get to have a realistic view of manhood and fatherhood where we can have an error, make a mistake, but turn to God and repent and know that our sins, our errors, our flaws, our, our faux pas, whether intentional or unintentional, um, are forgiven. And when you're a forgiving father, a forgiven father, you can be a forgiving father. And when you're a forgiven father and a forgiving father, your children know that they can always make a comeback, that they're not stuck 
in the downward position that they're in, that there is hope, um, that in faith, at the core of faith is hope, that believing indeed is seeing. We're told to walk by faith and not by sight um, because things will not look right until you look right, until you see things correctly, you cannot see things as they ought to be. And it, it, and you cannot hope the right direction if you're not seeing things correctly. And this is not with your the, the, your your eyes, but with your faith. Faith empowers vision. Faith empowers vision. Jesus spoke of two different types of light, a dark light and a and, and he being the true light. Very often the true light is rejected because people like the dark light. Because our deeds are are dark. Um, but it's important to be humble. It's important to be to 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 be one ready to Say I'm sorry when you're wrong. Um, to be honest when you're hurting, like I am right now. <laughs> to be um, um, hopeful, though, and expecting. And when you speak your hopes, that you believe that God does hear that God does deliver, but not that our treasures are here and now, but that our treasures are stored in heaven. Um, belief is so important. Uh, my son uh, plays football, and I make it known how much I believe in him and his team. I'm the loudest dad. Sometimes, um, especially at away games, I may be one of only a couple of dads, but I'm definitely the only loud one. And I want the, those young boys, those young brothers, those young uh, black men to be, uh, those young Christian men to be, uh, to know that someone has faith in them. That they that that believes in them, uh, and and I can speak to to the power of that in their very first game, when uh, they were down, and uh, in ho in my hollering, the other parents from the other team came to me and said, "You can see the difference. You can see the difference. You're sending hope to them." They came back and they won. Dad, when you have faith, your children may have difficulties. But when you have faith and you speak their best, you speak the blessing in their life, you speak, um, you give them the meaningful touch, whereby you hug them, you hold them, you let them know they'll be all right. You speak. You have a spoken word that you speak to them. You speak a word of high value that you, 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 you see greatness and you speak the greatness that is in them. That you are committed to seeing it through. That you, that, that you research with them. Uh, um, that you see the possi their possibilities. Um, I'm blessed that, that my my normally quiet daughter, um, my youngest, Eden, um, ran for uh, a school council, and now she's the school president. And to see the maturity whereby while they were cheering her name, she told them to be quiet because she was worried about how it would affect her opponents. And, and and then to have administration come to me 
and tell me this, that she is mature beyond her years by how she handled the situation, that she did not brag or boast in her victory, but she was concerned about those who lost. Faith is powerful, but faith is not an individual power there where you can twist God's arm and make him do things that he was not already going to do. Faith is belief and trust in God. And and when you believe and you trust in God, you recognize that all things are possible, that you are not limited by oppression. You're not limited by depression. You're not limited by opinions. That your family is not stuck where they are. That indeed you can do all things through Christ who strengthen you. That the written goal, someone's going to run with it. So write your goals. That the things you've scheduled may not come exactly how you schedule them, but in the timing of God, he will help you to number your days so that you may apply your heart to wisdom. Bless your children by having faith, Dad. Believe. Believing is seeing. Blindness is unbelief. Believe that your family is not stuck. That things can and will improve. And if they are going well, believe that God's hand is on you. Do not take it for granted. In your belief, be appreciative. Because since faith and believing is seeing, you can appreciate. You can be thankful. You can be aware. And you can increase in value. So now, um, it, it's important that uh, we, we thank our Father for being who he is, for being, for furthering fathering, Yes, I'm going to read that final verse. I I did not get back to it. And this is specifically for fathers. It's 1 Corinthians 16, 13, and 14. And I'm reading from the Amplified, and it says, Be on guard. Stand firm in your faith in God respecting his precepts and keeping your doctrine sound. Act like a much, like mature men and be courageous. Be strong. Let everything you do be done in love, motivated, inspired by God's love for us. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. For your faithfulness is the foundation of our faith. Because you never fail, because we are victorious in you, we can stand, be on guard, be firm in our faith, respect your precepts, and keep sound doctrine. Yes, you like childlike faith, but you want us to act like mature men and be courageous, to be strong. There's nothing toxic about being a strong, courageous, faithful man so that we can do everything that we do. And in furthering fathering, we just do, but we do it in love, motivated and inspired by your great love. This is Furthering Fathering, where fatherhood is elevated, families are empowered. 
and communities are transformed by our five core principles, honor, encouragement, accountability, reconciliation, and training, which form the word heart. Abba, lift us up to your heart so that we can share it with our children and with the world. In Jesus' name, until next week, bye-bye.